Our next speaker is Jay Kumar Bharadwaj. He's a Carnatic musician from Kalakshetra, but he comes here today as the founder of Prastara, a heritage organization working towards connecting children with their art and heritage and educating them to preserve our historical monuments. He dismisses the idea of history as being boring and says, history is not about learning the past. It's not facts, names, and dates. It's about learning from the past for a better future. So we present to you Jay Kumar Bharadwaj. Namaste. It's great to be here. And uh, it's a wonderful idea to share many ideas at the same time. Um, Don Taylor's, a British traveler who came to India in 1969, he found our country so, you know, very strange because so many regions and religions, different uh, geographical locations, and he concludes, and yet there is a precedence about India which seems an assurance of survival. There is something which can only be described as Indian spirit. Many people have said many great things about our country, but this particular quote, I feel it's very important because it came at a crucial time. After independence, we were struggling to put this 520-odd uh, small princely states put together. But something connected us. What was that? That's going to be my talk today. Uh, let me tell you my story. I belong to a very small village in South Tamil Nadu. It's called Trivengad. Uh, nothing much to mention about the village except a huge temple there. I think it's 60 to 65 acres in its you know, area. And then uh, we never cared much about the temple as we were growing. And um, of course, we had tourists all of, from all over the country visiting their temple every day but it never mattered to us as long as we get to play our cricket inside the temple complex. Because let me tell you, because we didn't have any playgrounds in my village. So all of the students, our friends, after the school, we assembled in the temple because at the time it let us to have 10 cricket matches. That's what mattered to me. As long as it let us you know, play cricket every day evening, nothing else mattered. Because people were going and coming out of the temple and then they looked like they knew everything that's happening inside the temple. I was clueless standing there and what are these people doing? What are they coming there for? Years passed by and uh, one summer holiday, my father gave me a book and uh, he said it's a historical fiction. I think you'll be interested in reading it. Then I was, I was really bored in the summer holiday because many of my friends left for a holiday. So I decided to flip through the pages. It, it was a story of a king called Raja Raja Chora who lived exactly 1030 years before. And then uh, it's a historical fiction, many facts put together. Of course, it was very interesting after that I left it. And then I moved to Chennai in 2001 to pursue my career in music at Kalakshetra. In 2003, I met an Indologist from Jerusalem, Mr. David Shulman. And uh, he came to attend a music concert in Kalakshetra. During the break, I had a chat with him and then uh, he asked me, where are you from? I told him I'm from this village. And then he went on and on and about my village for 45 minutes, how historically important that village was, how in 10th century there was a bronze ca casting that was happening there because Triven got bronzes were so appreciated, it's wonderful and all that. Then I was thinking, what is this man is talking about? I told him, sir, maybe you just mistook me. It's, an, it's not the village that you're talking about. We have nothing of that sort now. He said, no, 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 that's the same village I'm talking about. Your village is very ancient. It has so much in it. So try to understand it. Then uh, after a few years, there was a fan group at uh, Arkut, which discussed about the historical fiction I mentioned earlier, Pony in Selvan, story of Raja Raja Chodha. The fan club discussed many things about the novel, nothing great in uh, art and architecture, but just a story. And then few of us decided to visit those places that's been mentioned in that book. So we traveled because we never met uh, each other before, but the past c connected us. The past brought us together. So we traveled uh, in to many places in Tamil Nadu, the, wherever the book mentions very detailed, you know, and then they, we found many of these monuments that the temples that the books speak about were in utter ruins. There was no history. There was nobody to take care of these monuments. And then we travel, travel, and we find uh, we found that 
these wonderful monuments need attention and appreciation because every temple has its own mythology stories that's very hard to believe it is a, we, are, we, are, we are very young people we don't believe in such stories many of us we are not convinced with the incidents that's been told to us but we understood it is of historical importance we need to do something about it so after we went back to chennai i met many archaeologists many scholars and many historians and they gave me a lot of information about the past and then it gave me a new idea what we have been told by our parents and elders at home it's not 100% true there the temple it was not a place for worship it was a socio cultural economical center the king who built the temple made sure each and everybody from the society is connected to the temple now we feel so disconnected we feel so disconnected we don't even know why people go there we go there and we don't even visit the temple properly we just go there and then we think you know yeah we are done let's get out we go to the next temple we don't make an effort to see what is actually what was the reason behind the temple why did it why was it built who built it what was going through in the society what was the need for the temple in the society did it serve any purpose if i build a shopping mall it serves a purpose but temple now does it serve any purpose it can it can that's the idea we brought and uh, our friends again decided to work towards this preservation of this monuments these wonderful monuments in our country so we put an organization together it's called prastara prastara in sanskrit means a roof of a temple in temple architectural terms that covers that protects the monument we wanted to protect these monuments then we came back to my village i started to work i wanted to start my work with my village so i went to my school i spoke to the principal i said i'm going to talk to our kids about the history about our heritage he said go ahead i spoke to the kids and then i said what makes you what makes you think that you know why people are coming to our village he, one of them said anna because we have a huge temple in the village and then why is there why is it there i'm like they're like we don't know people are visiting that temple every day and then why do they visit one kid said no the temple is very powerful and they said so what makes you def- can you de- define you know what's powerful and she said we don't know maybe we haven't experienced it yet then i said let's make a visit to this temple then i took them around i explained about the sculptures about the inscriptions in detail after 2 hours i asked them what do you feel is it powerful they said no and it's not powerful it's beautiful so every monument every temple in our country has a story to tell us has an idea to give us why the temples were built to bring people together under one roof 1300 years ago there was a king called mahendra varma pallava the pallava dynasty which ruled from kanchipuram they ruled the entire south india the king excavated a cave temple we when you put a stone upon stone it's a built temple when you cut in inside a rock it's called ex- excavation excavated a, a temple for the first time in this part of the country and then he puts an inscription there me the mahendra varma pallava without using brick without using wood without using mortar for the first time i am excavating a temple in hard granite that's an idea that started there it gave us so much it still gives us so much are we ready to take it so how do we connect ourselves into this temple when you go there we study the inscriptions we study the icons we come to know about the history of our wonderful past so what do we do what do we do now how we can connect ourselves to these wonderful monuments we have to understand our past better in a better way we shouldn't be carried away with the stories and the mythology that's been told to us of course it's to an extent it's wonderful but understanding the past will increase the chances of a better future that's what i believe so how do we do it now the prastara visits each and every village in tamil nadu we are on the process we met or we went to three to four schools now we're going to start a heritage club we're going to ask those kids to find out the history about their own village because none of the history textbooks tells us what what where are we how what is the history of our village no we speak we speak about history of the place where which is which is few thousand miles away i don't even know whether we're going to go there in our lifetime so the understanding the past that is very important and then how do we do it we have to make it simpler 
the idea has to be given to the child in a simple manner we don't have to we shouldn't be complicating things for them to understand our past it has to be given because it's it's a simple idea of mahendra varma pallava we have so many temples today imagine a king a builds a huge temple and he puts a lot of inscriptions he says do you know thousand exactly 1025 years before rajaraja chola who ruled from tanjavur did a land survey of his entire territory that's been in the inscription on the temple at tanjavur we don't care about it we are very much you know happy to know the f- false information the temple tower doesn't cast a shadow this is how it is this is how it that is no land survey the first king in south india to do a rainwater harvesting if you go to tanjavur big temple now you can see the whatever the rain water it falls into the tanjavur temple it directly goes to a, through a channel to a huge temple tank that's been built next to the temple the rain water goes there what a wonderful idea we speak about rain water harvesting we speak about ecological systems they had stala vrikshas that is temple trees that's sacred to that particular territory they were able to preserve them by making it sacred because we have no other choice you know you have to if if you have to stop something i think if it, if i have to stop somebody to from cutting a tree i just put a kumkumam and then wrap a cloth around people will not cut it i know that because that's the way we stop things you know we have no other way so the inscription clearly says i did a land survey he said the land survey who did it who was the chief officer who did the land survey who was the person who helped him how many days it took me when did i complete it he didn't say i did it he said my officers did it that's a wonderful idea we can borrow from the king that's a wonderful idea we can borrow from the mahendra varma pallava he says the wonderful ideas the wonderful structures they have given to us it needs appreciation and attention we don't have to be scared because the children are being scared to go to the temple if you don't go to this temple you know nothing will nothing nothing good will happen in your life no you just go there understand appreciate be proud about your past understand the greater understanding you have the better future you will have how we can bring people together from all over because the temple was an employment center it was able to employ dancers musicians even a baba the hairdresser he was employed in rajarajeshwaram and tanjavur as inscription there is an inscription which speaks about how many night watchmen were employed in the temple how many people served at the temple so the in a way it was connected to people from all walk of life everybody from the society had some connection to the temple we don't have to do it the same way that rajaraja did but to an extent we can connect the entire society prastara is trying to connect the young child young children young people to connect to their heritage to connect their past we going to have music competitions inside the temple we going to have painting competitions because there are a lot of frescoes which needs must a- more attention and appreciation we going to take them because we not going to ask them to draw what they see we going to take them to the temple we going to make them understand how the paintings were done can you try do a replica of it what the paintings gives us it's not about mythology that's shown there my thing is how the people lived what's the dress code what are the ornaments what are the jewels what kind of a life they had these paintings tells us that not to forget the stories that gives that's for us to understand and leave it or whatever but take this little bit of ideas whatever i've been speaking today it's not my own idea it's an idea that i have bar- that i have borrowed i'm proud to say i have borrowed from the great king who lived 1300 years before a king had an idea mahendra varma pallava every time i visit that cave temple which is 75 kilometers away from chennai in a place called mandagapattu if you go there it's a deserted area nobody is going to be there one asi staff he'll be there we don't know when he's going to be there or not so when i go there i read the inscriptions i feel i'm connected to mahendra varma pallava that single idea that made a change in the entire art history of south india there were many temples built based on that idea many temples connected with the people connected to the society it served its purpose today we i don't think anybody is feels connected to these monuments because we don't want to care about because we have we think we have much better things to do no whenever you when you where you go to native place find out your history find out what was going on there 100 years before when did the first post office came to your place do we know when did it come when was the first school built in our village because we taken it for granted 
it's a great idea of somebody who lived 100 years before because we are getting being educated today so that's the idea we were talking about that's the idea i want to convey we can at this 21st century fitting in this context we can connect each and everybody to this wonderful monuments by so to the youth i'm going to give you a message saying whenever you visit a temple understand the reality of the temple don't litter the temple tanks that's been there for a long time let us not litter in those water tanks let us care about the trees that's in the temple when we start doing it from the temple we will definitely want to do it for the entire village from a village it can go to a town from the town it can go to the city from the city it can go to the entire state that's an idea i wanted to share today thank you very much mm-hmm.